In this video, we're going to look at level one, speaking and listening. Okay, so what are the key features of the speaking and listening at level one, Hilary? The most important thing um, for speaking and listening at level one is that it's a new component. So um, in the English for Office skills assessment that we have offered in the past, there wasn't a speaking and listening component. So this is new. It's an externally set assessment by City and Guilds, but it's internally assessed. So that means that teachers will be um, marking or assessing their own students' performance. Mm -hmm. The assessment um, has three components. So there's a discrete uh, listening task, which will take place on a fixed date. And then there are two other components, a small group discussion um, and a reflective piece, um, which learners can do when they're ready. OK, so where can I find the syllabus for this? The syllabus for this um, assessment can be found within the Qualification Handbook. Um, all schools should have a copy of the Qualification Handbook um, and some teachers who may have attended events in March or May may have taken one away with them, so they should be available to all teachers. So could you give me some idea of what's in the syllabus? So when you look inside the Qualification Handbook, you'll see for Level 1 that there are three units for speaking and listening. Each of those units contains some outcomes and some assessment criteria. So really that's your syllabus. So those are the things which need to be taught, which need to be delivered and which will be assessed. Mm -hmm. Also in the qualification handbook, you'll see some, some additional guidance which will amplify a little bit some of those statements. So you'll be able to get a bit more detail on what needs to be covered. Okay, so what do I need to teach and what will be assessed? Mm -hmm. So exactly that, so you need to look carefully at the units and the unit content, the outcomes and assessment criteria. That is what you need to cover in your teaching and learning programme and that is what will be assessed in the speaking and listening assessment. That's great Hilary, thank you. I think um, it would be helpful if you gave us a bit of information about the format of the assessment. And I know you've been involved in some of that work, so should we have a look at a paper? Yep, that's a really good idea. As you can see, the front page is for the candidate to complete with their name, uh, date of birth, their enrolment number and their signature and some dates. There's a little bit of general information to be gone through with them before they actually open up the paper. On the inside page there are the candidates instructions, what they have to do um, and check that they've put their name and details on the front of the cover sheet and complete the two activities. Again at level one there are two activities, a discrete listening activity and then a discussion activity. Activity one, they listen to a presentation and then they answer the questions. As you can see the marks are clearly highlighted there. And in activity two, there are 19 marks in total. It is a group uh, discussion and should take at least five minutes. The topic for the sample paper is about global warming and climate change, or there could be another topic that you've chosen as the assessor. A group is three people or more. A maximum of five is ideal. The candidate is also told what they're going to be tested on and then they have space for planning. They then have a series of questions on which they reflect on the discussion. And that's it for the speaking and listening as far as the candidate's concerned. Going back to that section which um, explained to the candidates what they'll be tested on, mm -hmm. of course it's useful to point out that the detailed content that the assessor needs to be covering with the candidate is also in yeah. the syllabus within the handbook. So that's a summary of some of the things that they'll be tested on, but of course the detail sits in the syllabus in the handbook. That's right. And then also I'd like to just have a look at the marking guide because this is for the assessor. Same as the entry three, you've got a clear guidance on City and Guilds. 
you also then have the guidance notes for the speaking and listening which as you rightly pointed out is also followed through in the handbook. It gives you the summary assessment record and the way the marks work out. So when you're trying to decide if it's a three marks, a two marks or a one mark, you can refer back here. The transcript. So if anything goes wrong and you haven't got the recording, you do have the transcript which can be read to the candidates. And that would be the teacher, uh, not the teacher who reads it because that's a voice that the candidates are used to yes. hearing. So it would need to be somebody who they're not, whose voice is not familiar to them. Yes. And also at this point I'd like to point out that it's uh, Jamaican Standard English that we're using throughout this assessment and it's not Creole. So we move into the assessment records and as you can see you've got the answers, you've got the number of marks and then the references to the City and Girls assessment criteria that maps to the handbook. So activity one is five marks and activity two there's a total of 19 marks. As with the entry three there's a box for the assessor to write in their comments and can I reiterate again please it's not an observation record of what you saw it's an assessment record so how did the candidate meet the criteria once again the assessor name signature and the date of the assessment the name signature and date that it was quality assured and by whom and then there's space for the external verifier and the date there. So um, as with the entry level assessment, uh, once the assessors have completed the assessment then the internal verifier might yes. sample from their plan Yes. and then the external verifier will be looking at the quality assurance work of the internal verifier. Yes. Good, thanks. Now, Hilary, could you just summarise the information that you've given us today? Yes, so just to recap, um, speaking and listening is a new component. Um, it is going to be uh, delivered in three parts. So the assessment has three components to it, a discrete um, listening task, which will, which will take place on a fixed date, a small group discussion, and then a reflective component. Um, the contents of that assessment, so the, the syllabus that needs to be taught and that will be assessed can be found in the qualification handbook and the qualification handbook should be available in every school. Um, so teachers must remember that they are going to be the assessors so they will actually be marking and uh, making assessment judgments um, about each candidate's performance themselves. Yes, I think that's really important. Thanks for that, Hilary.